So I've really been learning a couple things recently. Um, one of the most important things that I've started to learn, I think, um, maybe not, is that I need to not go on eBay to look at knives um, because I'm going to end up finding something that I want and I'm going to end up buying something. Um, so as some of you know at this point, because I've put out a couple videos on them, uh, I'm kind of into the granddaddy or daddy Barlows, you know, these big, like, five-inch Barlows. So I'm kind of into them. Um, and as you can see, there's one here in front of me on my table here. Um, and it's a case. And from what I can see on the tang stamp, I think it's from 1976. Um, so I saw this on eBay, and I looked at it because the blade looked like it still had a lot of life left in it, which is saying something about old knives that have clearly been used, because this one has clearly been used. And I saw it had had some blade life, well, quite a bit of blade life left, and I thought, okay. And I looked at it, and the guy wanted like $50 for it, and it looked, you know, pretty beat up and everything. Uh, it doesn't have bone uh, covers, it has... Uh, Delrin covers. Um, so, you know, I just kind of passed it up. And then, like, a couple hours later, I think the guy um, must have... I guess they can see that you view their product or view their uh, item or whatever. Um, and he gave me an offer, which I think was... It was either 10 or $5 less, um, which brought it down to $45. And at that point, I was kind of like, yeah, I'll do that. So, so I bought this for like $45, and I had to pay shipping anyway, so it ended up being like $52. Um, but, you know, that's not horrible, I didn't think. But, so I got the knife today, uh, and there are a couple little issues with it, which I will show you. Okay, so first things first, when I picked up the knife, and I held it, and I, you know, checked for some blade wobble. I noticed that I felt something moving, and I'm like, what's moving? The covers were moving. Um, the pins that were supposed to... Well, this one's out now, because it was sticking, like, halfway through the knife into the, like, you know, opening slot. Um, so I found a way to get that out of there. I just took, like, a flathead screwdriver and hammered it out of there, because the pin wasn't really doing anything to hold the cover on, and it was in the way of the blade. Um... Obviously, I've done a little bit of work on this knife before I did this video. There is still a pin in this side, um, although it's not really holding the cover on very well. Um, so the covers, I had, I tried to super glue them down. That probably won't work very well, so, you know, they'll probably flap around a little bit. Which isn't the end of the world, because, you know, there's still these other three pins holding the covers on. And like I said... These covers are Delrin and not bone or wood, so I'm not really concerned about them breaking or anything. Um, you know, the plastic Delrin's pretty durable, you know, you can bend it and everything. That's why they use it for knife handles. Um, so, so that was one thing that I noticed. Um, it does have some gapping, and this is after I did my normal, you know, hit it with a hammer technique. Uh, the action on the knife actually pretty good even after my hit it with a hammer technique um, obviously I put some you know mineral oil in there to try to get the action better um, and I did you know try to clean up the blade here a little bit just to try to get most of the actual like corrosion off of it obviously it's still gonna have staining because I think back in uh, 1976 I think all that case used was carbon steel and if not, uh, this blade's at least carbon steel. And so is the back spring, which is something that they don't do nowadays, which I kind of wish they did. Um, so yeah, those are like, you know, some little issues with it. Uh, of course, I sharpened it up. And after I did my hit it with a hammer technique, it doesn't really have any blade play or anything. So... It's pretty much a completely serviceable knife now. And right there's that Tang stamp. Um, I believe that dates it to 1976. Um, if any of you out there know better than I do, I just have a little date card here, and I, you know, the way I read it, 
this seems like a 1976 knife. Um, but if any of you know any better, uh, let me know. So I got a completely usable knife that has been carried by somebody for what what seems to be probably a while. And, you know, I did a couple little things to it to make it uh, better, in my opinion. You know, I got that pin out of the way of the blade and, you know, kind of got corrosion, that, the uh, excessive corrosion off of it and everything. And now it seems like it's a going to be a pretty decent knife to carry and uh, it will eventually one of these days find its way into my pocket and I will carry it and continue on the life of this knife. Um, I'm not too sure if the $52 that I spent on this was a wise purchase or not. Uh, obviously I don't think this knife's ever going to be worth anything because as most of you know the knives that are worth something are the knives that nobody ever used and obviously this one's been used in fact most of my knives are not going to be worth anything because I tend to you know use my knives for knife stuff um, so yeah but you know I spent fifty two dollars on this I got a usable uh, big Barlow like I like and uh, it'll get carried and it will live on